Tonight, at least 28 dead now in this brutal winter storm and frigid air in the Northeast. Multiple members of the same family killed when they got out of their car. The brutal wind chills and below freezing temperatures from Chicago all the way to New York City. And now the new storm on the move tonight. The Midwest, then the Great Lakes into the Northeast again. Tonight, the deadly accidents on the highways in Pennsylvania. Several members of that same family killed when they got out of their car after a crash and were then hit by a tractor trailer. Tonight, Buffalo issuing a travel ban, closing schools. Washington, D.C. to Philadelphia to New York, all bracing for the next system coming. Rob Marciano timing it out. In New York City tonight, the manhunt for a possible serial stabbing suspect. Authorities say surveillance images show him armed with a hunting knife. At least three victims attacked just today. One victim stumbling into a dry cleaners for help. Stephanie Ramos with new reporting. Also in New York, an explosive day in court at the civil defamation trial against Donald Trump. A jury already fighting Trump liable. With his accuser, E. Jean Carroll, on the stand today, Trump lashing out. The judge threatening to kick him out of court. The disturbing video tonight, a 14-year-old boy with autism tased by police in his own backyard. The boy suffering a broken hip. The family calling it a case of mistaken identity. An officer can be heard questioning if they have the right person. The news from the UK tonight, Princess Catherine in the hospital for weeks after undergoing abdominal surgery. What we've now learned tonight, and King Charles will have surgery next week. Back here in the U.S., the high stakes meeting at the White House today. Late today, President Biden urging congressional leaders to move forward with aid for Ukraine. Speaker Mike Johnson insisting the border here comes first. Mary Bruce at the White House. There is news tonight about the 10 year old boy attacked by a shark. What we're now learning about his condition. Tonight, the NBA coach dead. The Golden State Warriors stunned by the death of their assistant coach. Tonight's game called off. And America strong tonight, the romantic proposal on the beach and the little girl who had something else in mind. You have to see this. From ABC News World Headquarters in New York, this is World News Tonight with David Muir. Good evening, and it's great to have you with us here on a Wednesday night. We do begin tonight with a new storm coming with this nation already in the grip of a deadly Arctic blast. At least 28 people have been killed since Sunday across this country. The brutal wind chills from Chicago to New York City and now the Midwest, the Great Lakes and the Northeast bracing again. This new system tonight starting in the West, moving into the Dakotas and the Midwest tomorrow, then the Great Lakes combining with yet another system in the South and then barreling right up the East Coast. As you can see again, more snow, frigid temperatures behind it. And the death toll now growing. The tragic story on Interstate 81 near Scranton, Pennsylvania. Five members of the same family who got out of their cars after an accident were then killed by a tractor trailer. A travel ban remaining in effect for parts of Erie County in western New York tonight amid another round of lake effect snow. Several feet in Buffalo, up to three additional feet by tomorrow night. Rob Marciano with the forecast tonight and Trevor Alt at LaGuardia Airport leading us off tonight. Tonight, that deadly Arctic blast fueling a lake effect snow machine, bringing feet of fresh snow to western New York, a state of emergency in Erie County, an army of plows out in force, front loaders full of snow. If you don't need to go outside, please don't go outside. Overnight on Interstate 81 north of Scranton, Pennsylvania, five women, all from the same family, struck and killed by a tractor trailer after they got out of their vehicles following a separate crash. In Chicago, they're in the throes of their longest stretch of temperatures below five degrees in nearly 30 years. It's a splintering cold where it feels like almost like you have like pins or needles pricking you. In the Colorado Rockies, an extreme avalanche danger. Our Rob Marciano in Steamboat Springs. It is just coming down here at the top of Steamboat. Ski patrollers working overtime this week trying to control all the snow. Avalanche warnings level four of five. Super dangerous through at least Thursday afternoon. And in the Pacific Northwest, wind driven snow from a new system reducing visibility. Drivers going off the road in Washington State and in Portland, Oregon, three people killed after a tree branch caused a power line to fall on their vehicle. And David, the cold and the storms continue to cause major problems for airlines. Once again today, more than a thousand flights canceled, about 5,000 flights delayed, and now the airlines are preparing as yet another storm is set to move into the Northeast. David. All right, Trevor Alt leading us off again tonight. Trevor, thank you. Let's get right to senior meteorologist Rob Marciano tracking it all. It just keeps coming, Rob. 
Yeah, David, here's that new storm. It's been, uh, been snowing all day. It's going to continue tomorrow as it drives through the mountains and into the plains where already we have winter alerts up from South Dakota through much of Iowa again and into the Mid-South, including Memphis and much of uh, Kentucky. Uh, so here we go. As it goes into the plains, the low begins to develop more right over the heartland. Precip is straddling it as it drives up the Ohio River. It's going to move quickly like the last one. Everyone's going to get snow, say, north of, of I-40, and then uh, out of here by Friday afternoon. But I-95 is going to be all snow. D.C., Philly, New York, there by lunchtime, probably gone by Friday night. But one to three inches again. Three to six, Pittsburgh, Cleveland, back through Chicago. But here comes the cold behind it again. Looks like a brutal weekend again for Kansas City. Minus 20 for a wind chill. Zero again in Memphis. That snow sticks. Chicago 15, 16 below. And New York, no picnic at nine degrees as well. Hello, January. No David. question about that. Rob Marciano live in Colorado with the system that's coming east. Rob, thank you. Meantime, in New York City tonight, there's an urgent manhunt underway at this hour for a possible serial stabber. Multiple stabbing attacks just today. One victim stumbling into a dry cleaners for help. The NYPD releasing surveillance images tonight showing the suspect armed with a hunting knife. They're asking for the public's help and they want to know if he's behind other recent attacks. Here's ABC's Stephanie Ramos now. Tonight, an urgent manhunt in New York City for this suspected serial stabber, police say, is behind multiple attacks in less than two weeks. Obviously, this person is armed and dangerous. So if you know something, call the NYPD immediately. Around 8 this morning, authorities say the suspect stabbed three men in separate attacks in Queens. One of the victims stumbling into Bruce Ann's dry cleaners for help. He said he's just walking on the street and some young guy behind him. He just is stepping his back. Tonight, police releasing these images of the suspect armed with a hunting knife. Authorities believe he is responsible for at least two other assaults in Queens, including a woman stabbed in her torso just a day ago. And in Brooklyn, investigators working to determine if a knife attack on a train this morning is also linked to the suspect, the victim suffering a non life threatening injury to the stomach. David, all of the victims are expected to survive, but as authorities search for the suspected serial stabber, they are warning New Yorkers the suspect is armed and dangerous, so they should stay alert. David. All right, Stephanie Ramos tonight. Steph, thank you. We turn now to the drama in a Manhattan federal court. Writer E. Jean Carroll taking the stand in her defamation case against Donald Trump. A jury already finding Trump liable in the case before. Trump in the courtroom today, Carroll testifying when Trump made himself heard. The judge threatening to eject him and Aaron Katursky at the courthouse. Tonight, fireworks in the court. Donald Trump face to face with E. Jean Carroll. A jury has already found him liable for sexually assaulting her in a dressing room at Bergdorf Goodman in the 1990s and then defaming her. Carroll's now suing Trump a second time, saying he continues to badmouth her. Carroll testified, I'm here because Donald Trump assaulted me. And when I wrote about it, he lied and he shattered my reputation. She told the jury, I've paid just about as dearly as is possible to pay. Her attorney said Trump unleashed his followers to go after Carol, showing the court a series of violent and threatening messages she's received, including one saying, I hope someone really does attack, rape, and murder you. Carol says she now lives on hyper alert with a pit bull patrolling her house and a gun by her bed. As Carol testified, Trump could be heard muttering, It really is a con job. Though again, he has already been found liable for assaulting and defaming Carol in order to pay damages. Judge Lewis Kaplan warning him to be quiet. Mr. Trump, I hope I don't have to consider excluding you from the trial. Trump throwing up his arms, I would love it, I would love it. The judge responding, I know you would because you can't control yourself. Tonight, Trump still claiming he doesn't know Carol, even though her attorney showed this picture. Trump and Carol greeting each other in 1987. This is a person I have no idea until this happened, obviously. I have no idea who she was, and nor could I care less. The jury will now decide how much more Trump owes Carol for his continued insults, including his statement that she's not my type, which Carol says she took to mean I'm too ugly to assault. Trump has already been ordered to pay Carol $5 million in damages. She's now looking for at least another $10 million. David, she'll be back on the witness stand tomorrow for more cross-examination. David. Aaron Katursky at the courthouse tonight. Aaron, thank you. Now to New Hampshire tonight, less than a week to go until the New Hampshire primary. Former President Trump taking aim now at Nikki Haley, who has pulled within single digits of Trump in the polls there. And Ron DeSantis determined to keep going. Here's Rachel Scott. He's trailing in New Hampshire, but today Florida Governor Ron DeSantis urging his supporters to stick with him. 
Uh, you know, this is going to be a long slog. But DeSantis is leaving New Hampshire tonight and heading to Florida. He'll be back on Friday, but he's spending the final weekend before the primary in South Carolina, where he's now moved the majority of his staff. That contest, not until February 24th. It comes with New Hampshire polls showing former South Carolina Governor Nikki Haley within single digits of the front runner Donald Trump. We came out strong. Now we want to finish New Hampshire and come out even stronger. Trump ramping up his attacks on his former U.N. ambassador, saying she's not tough enough. Nikki Haley is a disaster. And honestly, she was not a good negotiator. She was not a good negotiator. But when Haley left his administration, Trump had nothing but praise. She's done an incredible job. She's a fantastic person. Haley now tying Trump to President Biden, saying it's time to move on from both of them. The majority of Americans think that having two 80-year-olds running for president is not what they want. Donald Trump touching down in New Hampshire tonight where he'll hold a rally here in Portsmouth. Nikki Haley holding a competing event, insisting that her campaign is the best hope of stopping what she calls the Biden-Trump nightmare. David. Rachel Scott again tonight. Thank you, Rachel. We're going to turn now to news from the UK tonight where Princess Catherine will be in the hospital for as many as two weeks after undergoing abdominal surgery. What we've now learned in Buckingham Palace now revealing that King Charles will also have surgery next week and why they say he wanted his diagnosis to be shared. Here's our foreign correspondent, James Longman from London. Tonight, health scares for the most senior members of Britain's royal family. Kensington Palace revealing the Princess of Wales underwent abdominal surgery yesterday and will have to recover in the hospital for as many as 14 days. The palace says the princess's condition is not cancerous, but did not share any more details, adding Catherine hopes that the public will understand her desire to maintain as much normality for her children as possible and her wish that her personal medical information remains private. The 42-year-old princess, who was last seen at Christmas, will now be out of the public eye until after Easter. And not long after Kate's news emerged, Buckingham Palace released a statement saying King Charles will also undergo surgery next week. In a statement, the palace said, in common with thousands of men each year, the king has sought treatment for an enlarged prostate. His majesty's condition is benign. Prostate problems are common among men Charles's age. The 75-year-old will stay at the hospital overnight and has also cancelled engagements until he recovers. David, the king remains able to fulfil his constitutional duties, but Prince William is also going to have to take a bit of a step back to look after their children and, of course, his wife as she recovers. David? James Longman in London tonight. James, thank you. Back here at home into the disturbing video, a 14-year-old boy with autism tased by police in his own backyard. The family calling it a case of mistaken identity. An officer can be heard questioning if they have the right person. Alex Prez with the police video tonight, and we warn, it is disturbing. Tonight, parents outraged after they say their teenage son with autism was mistaken for a suspect and tased by police outside Chicago. Body camera video obtained by our station WLS is showing officers apprehending 14-year-old Avarius Thompson last November. Get your hands up! Hands up! Hands up! Sit down! Thompson's family says he was returning home from getting snacks at the grocery store when he was tased multiple times in their own backyard. Don't move! You move, you gotta get some more! Dalton, Illinois police say they were called to assist neighboring Riverdale police who were searching for four suspects, two carrying rifles and a handgun. Thompson's clothes, quote, matching the description. Don't move! But in the video, one officer questions whether they have the right person. I don't think this is him, bro. This might not be him. Thompson hospitalized with tase marks on his body and a fractured hip. His mother frantic. The family's attorney says the teenager was never charged. He's just a lovable kid, you know, and I just, I couldn't believe that this could happen to my kid. And David, the Riverdale police chief said suspects were ultimately arrested and charged. In a statement, the city of Dalton says the incident is under investigation. David? All right, Alex Perez reporting tonight. Alex, thank you. Next this evening to the breaking news coming in as we're on the air in the West from the Middle East, the U.S. officials tonight confirming the U.S. has now launched new retaliatory strikes against Houthi targets in Yemen, the Iranian-backed militants. They had targeted a second American cargo ship in the Gulf of Aden. The new attacks tonight come after three rounds of U.S. airstrikes targeted their facilities. The White House had said they had limited the Houthis' arsenal but did not eliminate it. Now more U.S. strikes now underway against those militants tonight.
Meantime, the first shipment of medicine for dozens of hostages held by Hamas has arrived in Gaza, part of a deal brokered by Qatar and Egypt. The deal is broader than expected. A Qatari spokesman said for every box of medicine provided for hostages, 1,000 boxes of medicine would be provided for Palestinians. The Red Cross will now deliver the aid. This is the first agreement between Israel and Hamas since a temporary truce in November that freed dozens of captives. Back in Washington, D.C., to the high-stakes meeting at the White House late today involving funding for Ukraine, President Biden sitting down with congressional leaders from both parties, warning them of the urgent need for Ukraine. The Speaker of the House, though, saying the border must come first. Let's get right to Mary Bruce, live at the White House. Mary, where does this stand tonight? Well, David, tonight both sides are describing this meeting here at the White House as productive, but right now the path forward still is not clear. Republican Speaker Johnson saying that while he understands the need for more funding for Ukraine, they have to tackle U.S. border policy first. Now, President Biden has said he is willing to compromise, but it's still not clear what he would be willing to accept. And the White House tonight well aware that a bipartisan deal is now coming together in the Senate. Even GOP leader Mitch McConnell telling Republicans this could be their best chance to get something done on immigration. Now, meanwhile, the White House is warning Republicans the funding has run out, saying that Ukraine could possibly lose this war to Russia if the U.S. doesn't step up. David. Mary Bruce, live at the White House for us with late reporting. Mary, thank you. When we come back, news coming in tonight about the 10-year-old boy attacked by a shark in the Bahamas and what we're now learning about his condition. Also, the stunning death tonight of an NBA coach, the Warriors devastated by the loss of their assistant coach. And what Jason Kelsey is now saying about retirement. There is news tonight about that 10-year-old boy from Maryland who was attacked by a shark in the Bahamas. The boy was bitten on his right leg while in a shark enclosure at the popular Atlantis Resort on Paradise Island. He's now recovering from surgery at a hospital in Nassau where he is in serious but stable condition. He's now expected to be airlifted back to Maryland as early as tonight. The resort has yet to comment on this. Panera Bread is facing a new lawsuit now over its highly caffeinated charged lemonade drink. Lauren Scarrett of Rhode Island is now suing the company, claiming the popular drink caused her to have permanent heart problems. She claims she had palpitations after consuming two and a half drinks on the same day. She says she had no underlying health issues before that. Two other lawsuits blame the drink for the deaths of two customers. The company has previously said it stands by the safety of its products. When we come back here tonight, the stunning death in the NBA this evening, the Warriors responding tonight, the game canceled, and what Jason Kelsey is now saying about all those reports of retirement. To the index of other news tonight and a death in the NBA this evening, Golden State Warriors assistant coach Dayan Maloyevich has died. The team says he suffered a medical emergency during a team dinner in Salt Lake City last night. He was just 46 years old. Head coach Steve Kerr tonight calling it a shocking and tragic blow and says the team is absolutely devastated. Tonight's game against the Utah Jazz has been postponed. Tonight, Philadelphia Eagles star Jason Kelsey says despite the reports out there, he's not announcing his retirement just yet. During his podcast with his brother Travis, Jason Kelsey saying he's not trying to be dramatic and draw this out. He just wants the decision to be made in a way that's decisive and respectful, he said. He says an announcement will come in the near future. When we come back here tonight, you have to see this. The romantic proposal on the beach and the little girl who had something else in mind. Finally tonight here, Dad had set up the camera to capture the moment with Mom, but their little girl had something else in mind. Tonight, the story behind this image and what's happened since. Best laid plans, the young couple Jonathan and Taylor at the beach in Ludington, Michigan, north of Grand Rapids, with their 18-month-old daughter, Kendall. Dad asking their little girl if he could ask mom a question. What do you think? Should we change mommy's last name? No. no. Mom laughs when Kendall appears not interested. The couple together six years, and dad was about to ask mom to marry him. You can see mom's reaction, dad down on one knee proposing, but watch their daughter. She spots the phone dad had put down to capture the moment. And the moment becomes more about her. Mom said yes to dad, but you wouldn't know it because their daughter's in front of the phone. You can hear mom and dad laughing in the background. The mom and dad moment going viral online, telling us tonight you can spend months planning for the perfect moment but sometimes the unexpected can make it 10 times better and more memorable. And tonight, just look at them now. Jonathan and Taylor on their wedding day and Kendall right there with them, cooperating on the big day, telling us Kendall was the flower girl. And once again, she stole the show.
I think Kendall will be stealing the show for years to come. Beautiful family. Congratulations. I'm David Muir. Good night. Thank you for making World News Tonight with David Muir, America's most watched newscast.